Hey y'all, let's talk tiny white bugs crawling in your soil or on your pots. These aren't springtails, these are soil mites. Now for the next three, four, five minutes, I don't know, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about soil mites and how to get rid of them. Then I'll insert some clips of how I handled my soil mite issue. Now, soil mites are tiny white or tan bugs that, like springtails, feed on decomposing matter. The soil mites you're probably seeing are orbited mites, O-R-B-A-T-I-D, just in case you want to Google that. And the main difference between springtails and soil mites is that the soil mites don't jump. And I've watched these little mites and they're kind of slow moving, but sometimes it looks like they don't move at all. So it'll look like a little speck of sand or debris. Now, if you're seeing these bugs, especially for the first time, it's probably when you've disturbed the top part of the soil and you saw some movement, or maybe you just saw one crawling along the pot. Well, soil mites, again, like springtails, will appear when your soil is constantly wet and have some sort of food source of decomposing matter. That includes bark, like the orchid bark that we just love to use for drainage. Honestly, if there's any woody material in your soil mix, they will feed on that. And I also read that they feed on peat moss, but don't get cocky if you use coconut core, okay? Because you can get soil mites in coconut core too. Plastic pot people, y'all can get soil mites too. But for the terracotta lovers, this is for y'all. Be mindful of the white stuff that forms on the outside of the pot, you know, that mineral buildup. Sometimes it's not just mineral buildup on the pot. There's also some white mold in there. And, you know, there may be a lot or there may be just a little bit, you know, a few small areas of it. And you might not notice it or you might not care because it's harmless. But the soil mites will feed on that mold too. And I'll show you that a little bit later. Dead leaves and roots are a food source for the mites as well. So if your plants are indoors, dead leaves really shouldn't be much of an issue for you. But the roots might be if they're rotting. So these tiny white bugs in your soil are soil mites feeding on decomposing matter like bark, peat moss, dead roots. And because your soil is retaining enough water or moisture, that creates the favorable conditions for them to live in and feed in or feed on. Now, are they harmful? That part is up for debate based on my research. I've seen some say that they are and that they aren't. On one hand, they're harmless and beneficial for your soil because they can help break down that organic matter, which is, you know, good for something like composting. And for that reason, people leave them alone. On the other hand, I've read that to humans, they are harmful because there's a possibility that they can carry and transmit bad bacteria and parasites like tapeworms, and we do not want that. But again, some people leave them alone and, you know, just do what you do. Now, personally, I've encountered soil mites indoors and outdoors. Outdoors, I did not leave them alone. I gave them one good blast of water and never saw them again. Indoors, I got rid of those too. So if you're like me and you don't care if they're harmless or not and just want to get rid of them, keep watching and listening because I'm about to show and tell you. Now for indoor plants, this is just for indoor plants that I'm talking about. There's two ways that I've tried to get rid of them and only one has been successful. The first way is to let the soil dry out, drive them out that way. So you will clean out or clean the outside of your pots with the plant still in it, just clean the outside of the pot thoroughly. Remove the top one to two inches of soil and dump it. Soil mites usually live in the top one to two inches of soil, but they can make their way throughout the pot, especially if you have any um, bark or rotting roots. Once the top inch or two has been removed, spread some diatomaceous earth in there and then fill it back up with clean soil and add more diatomaceous earth in there, okay? Personally, like this method didn't really work for me, but that might have been because I wasn't very patient with, you know, the diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth is not always like an overnight success, especially like I want it to be. So, you know, I wanted to get rid of these things ASAP and yeah. And I haven't tried this, but you can also try using some sort of insecticide. And, you know, there's some DIY solutions out there that you can Google and try as well. Now, the second method I used to get rid of soil mites, which was a success, was repotting all of my plants. And I know that sounds daunting, but it worked. I leave all of your plants without the desired food sources. So get rid of any bark, moss, um, dead roots, leaves, and repot using only peat moss or, or coca core. 
and perlite or shale. That's it. My mixes included orchid bark, and that's exactly what the soil mites were feeding on, just the orchid bark. And I had to repot all of my plants because most of my plants contain orchid bark. Um, not all of my pots, there were just like a few pots that didn't have soil mites that I could see, but I repotted everything anyway, just in case. And I repotted it using coco core and a mix of shale and perlite. So here's some clips of what I did. I'm going to handle this by repotting most of my plants that contain any sort of bark, which is most of them actually, so I have a lot to do. As I unpot all of the plants, I'm going to put all of the pots in this uh, solution of water and bleach, and then I'm going to put all of the plants in this little cup of water and hydrogen peroxide. So this is the second set of plants that I have to repot and I'm just noticing how well some of these are growing and I'm really just, I'm upset because I'm disrupting their whole flow, like look at this. Oh well, I don't want soil mites so gotta do what I gotta do, hope for the best. I will say these things are resilient. I dunked them in the water and bleach and they're still moving. Wow. So when using terracotta pots, you'll develop this white buildup. And most articles or people will say that this is all just salt buildup and it's fine, it's harmless, but it's also uh, white mold as well, which is also harmless however it does it does attract the soil mites as well they feed off the mold and clean your pots i actually clean my pots when i see this buildup happening and i see this mold but after i water them they it just develops quickly these are all the plants that i was able to unpot for right now this is all i have left of the second batch um, here are all the pots. I want to let these soak in the bleach solution for a little bit longer um, and I'm just going to wash off the roots of these plants for right now so I can just sit them in some clean water and hydrogen peroxide just until I can get these pots scrubbed and situated. This is all of the potting mix that I have. Um, I was going to sift it down twice so I can get all of the bigger chunks and then the smaller chunks and then just have the soil or the coca core. And then I was just going to pour some boiling hot water over the coca core uh, to sterilize it, but I think I'm just going to use this mix for outdoor plants. I need pots now, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rinse these off scrub them clean, rinse them again, put them back in another in a new mixture of bleach and water, let them dry, maybe rinse them one more time, let them dry again, and seal them. I'm going to start planting or repotting all of my plants. Here's some in here. I have this container and about five cups of other plants that I need to repot. I'm going to do some consolidating too. So I'm not going to show y'all my entire repotting process, but I am going to show y'all what I'm using. Cocoa core, shale. Shale acts like perlite. It's just heavier. It doesn't float to the top and it absorbs water. I will be using perlite though. I'm going to alternate between the two. And I will be sprinkling diatomaceous earth that I put into this bottle into my mixtures as well. Each mixture will contain different um, amounts of perlite or shale or coca cola and all that. So that's what I'm using. All of my plants, well most of them have been repotted. They are all bark and sphagnum moss free. Soil mites do like sphagnum moss too, I think. Um, but yeah, so I'm happy about that for now. I'm going to keep monitoring them. I will be applying diatomaceous earth on top of the soil 
weekly um, and like I told you earlier I mixed it into um, my potting mixes as well but I should be all good now I also during this whole process found out that a lot of my plants were um, potted or I potted them in too big of pots so I did downsize some of the pots and I um, consolidated them so if I had like I had three separate plants of this put one in one pot and two in another because I don't need to have that many pots around right now everything looks good looks great I do believe that repotting was the best way for me to remedy this little problem um, and diatomaceous earth should you know keep everything in line spring is here the pests are out in full force i've already seen some mealybugs in the grass spider mites on oxalis outside um aphids all that so they're here they're ready be prepared get your mix ready this is water alcohol and dish soap get ready for the pests hopefully you don't have to deal with any but if you do or just need to, you know, something to help maintain your plants. That's a good little mixture to use. All right. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you learned anything from this video, that's great.